so apparently I'm having all kind of technical difficulties. I do apologize for that. I wanted to hop on to kind of give a little more in depth of what I'm going through in regards to me being newly diagnosed with ADHD as an adult. I am 41 years old. I was diagnosed at 41 years old so this is all still relatively new and things that I learned over the past several months that has really kind of helped me get control of my ADHD symptoms. So many things make a lot of sense since being diagnosed. I am more aware of my symptoms. I fidget a lot. My mind is constantly going a hundred miles an hour and I am often on to the next subject even though I initiated the conversation and we're having the conversation and then all of a sudden oop, guess what on to the next subject. I understand how that can be very frustrating for people so these are just some of the things that I've learned to cope with. I have my notes of course because I'm trying to stay on track here. Understanding ADHD. I feel like that is a good place to start. You know you think of like those kids in school that couldn't sit down in their chairs and I mean be that as it may that is one manifestation of the symptoms. Often times than not it is misdiagnosed even though I was never evaluated as a child, I feel like if I would have been on someone's radar, some of the things that I show would have been caught early, if that makes any sense. I made a list of all of the things that I recognized were my symptoms since going through the evaluation process. I am also extremely unorganized. Back when I was working. I had a propensity for being late. No matter how much I planned the night before, like getting everything together, packing my lunch the night before, packing my husband's lunch. You know, this was before we had kids even. I was still perpetually late every day to my job and I still don't understand why. And the only reason why I'm on time for like doctor's appointments is because maybe selfish reasons like okay you're checking out my kid for me you know they they're getting their health checkups I don't know but oh I'm extremely forgetful I'm extremely impulsive and this is another reason why over the years I've learned to kind of rely on my husband because <laughs> I, oh my gosh, if he would let me run rampant with all of the random harebrained ideas, we would be like living in a box under a bridge. I mean that in the most real way. Like, I am so grateful that he's been there to kind of rein me in over the years and say, mm mm we are not doing that so thank you baby so a physical symptom that i've noticed or not that i've noticed but has become more apparent to me since being diagnosed is my inability to sit still i'm either always fidgeting with something shifting in my seat what i do more often than not is i'll sit and just kind of shake my leg. I mean, I know you probably can't see, but you know, my husband would always go like, you know, are you okay? Is something going on? And I'm like, oh yeah, I'm fine. Oh, so this has been a struggle for me forever. I can never, it is difficult for me. I never say never, but it is so difficult for me to bring projects to completion and what I mean by that is I start a million things and I finish none of them. I also have shiny object syndrome. I'd be like oh I like this, oh I like this, oh I like this. I can, I'm definitely easily distracted. Whenever I am in school I almost have to have like complete silence almost for me to even really just sit and get through any of my assignments that I have to do. One thing 
I've learned about myself is the fact that I learn in a different way. Once I started appreciating that and really kind of taking that in and accepting it, then I was able to break down the wall of anxiety and commit to something. So right now, completion I know is difficult for me. So right now I'm going to focus on committing to things. So if I commit to something, I am going to keep my word and I am going to hold up my end of the commitment. So with that, I use a lot of planners, reminders, and um, whiteboards. So for instance, my calendar app, but the reason why I, me personally, I can't solely use my calendar app because if I just put it in my phone, I'm gonna forget about it. My attention span is like that long. So what I need, I need them in different places. I have this little notebook that just has, I just have things listed that if I have this, it's like a backup for this. And also there is a magnetic whiteboard that we have where I also write out every Sunday, I write out all of the appointments for that upcoming week. And what I've noticed, at least if I have these little visual reminders and visual cues, different places, it helps me remember, it helps me stay on track with things that I have planned or scheduled for that day. And especially now with A, the kids getting older and B, DJ being diagnosed as being on the spectrum and also ADHD, there's a lot more appointments. So I have to hold myself accountable and plan accordingly. Another thing I also try to do is I try not to take on too big a responsibilities at one time. I don't know if this has anything to do with my ADHD, but I get overwhelmed very quickly. Even though I have the best intentions, sometimes some things can just be too much for me. When I do start to feel overwhelmed, I kind of shut down and I cocoon myself, which may or may not be a good thing. I found comfort in that. I do know that if I promise to be somewhere, I'm going to try my best to uphold my deal of the bargain. But now that I'm mindfully planning for myself and I know that sometimes I can't help if um, something were to happen. I, I don't spread myself thin. I absolutely have learned to set boundaries. These boundaries basically protect my sanity. So, oh gosh, guys, setting boundaries, godsend godsend. So we'll, we'll get into that later. Another thing that helps me is flexible time management. What I mean by um, flexible management of time or tasks is I like to use what is called the, and I wrote this down, this is called the Eisenhower matrix. So basically what you do is you will prioritize anything that you need to get done for the day, for instance. So if you are a stay-at-home mom or even if you are a work from home mom, or even if you're a full-time working mom, whatever list that you have, you prioritize it. And what I like to do is I have my absolutely need to be's, I have my would be nice to have's, and then I have my eh. So absolutely needs to be would be like making meals for the kids helping the kids with their schoolwork, with their educational needs. Those are things that have to get done no matter what. So that is like the tip of that iceberg. And then the things that are nice to get done, if I can get to them, great, but they do get pushed to the next day. And then it kind of creeps up, you know, depending on what other things that I have. So like, let's just say for instance, okay, it was a very busy day. I couldn't get the laundry folded and put away. So if I have to move that to the next day, that's what I would do. But that laundry then becomes just that little bit much more of a priority because I don't want to keep basically kicking the bucket down the road. So another thing that really, really helps me and this I credit 100,000% to my husband is building that supportive network. 
Let me tell you. So I already realized that I have had like these quirks about myself. I do things a certain way. It does feel really good and really amazing to have like your partner who is not only supporting you getting help for yourself and actually being a backbone and 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 that support that you need for to get help for yourself but also being open and willing to implement changes that you need to make for yourself because let me tell you there is nothing worse than you're trying to change yourself for the better or improve yourself and you have a partner or a situation that is anchoring you down in that same spot so the fact that my husband he not only supports me finding this stuff out and being evaluated but he also supports and participates in things that i need to do in order to improve my quality of life so i'm very very thankful for you honey and i love you so i just wanted to say that okay so anyway um <laughs> Another thing that I also like to do is, and I'm, I'm learning, I'm, I'm applying this to myself only after doing this with my son, but I always have to remind myself to take mindful breaks. A lot of times I, like when I'm cleaning the kitchen or cleaning the living room, I just want to get everything done at once. And then I start to force myself to kind of like pull through we got to finish this task go for that gusto make it to the finish line which is great and that may work for other people that does not work for me I notice that I get more things done when I kind of work what is it the 25 on and five off and all of that I just I don't know taking those mindful breaks or when I know like okay I'm a little tired I'm gonna play royal match on my phone or you know just something that's gonna take your mind away from that task and then come back to it I almost feel like the when you break up the task at hand it just makes it more bearable i don't know that that's the way i kind of like look at it but yeah i don't know maybe that's a thing maybe it's not but i wonder oh another thing too is i am a huge proponent of yoga and moving your body intentionally but even if you're not into yoga because i know a lot of people aren't into it and i totally get it and i totally respect that but i also think that it's really calming to move your body with intention so even if that's doing some stretching even if that's doing some bending even if that's just you know giving your back a little crunch crunch and no, i'm kidding I also try to remind myself to not be so hard on myself. The negative self-talk is real and negative self-talk can really can really get you in a headspace where you really don't need to be. So I just think it's important to always find, I think it's important to find a way to always stay encouraged and I kind of feel like after the diagnosis, even though it made sense, it took a little bit for me to process and come to terms with the fact like, oh, okay, I actually have this disability. I think finding what works for you and putting a system in place that will help you stay focused, stay on track, bring things to completion, finally checking some things off your list and that's what i hope that you found from this video if you have any other suggestions i am definitely open to hear about other things that you may do to help kind of alleviate your adhd symptoms so that is all for this video if you like what i offer please consider subscribing to my channel oh yeah and don't forget to again share and comment and all that good stuff yeah We'll definitely see you on the flip side. Until next time, give yourself grace, give yourself compassion, be gentle with yourself, and I will see you in the next video. Have a good day, guys. Bye.